الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد the concept of loving and hating for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al wala wal bara this is a major issue a major detailed uh, mas'ala which is detailed in many of the books of creed in aqida books of belief and loving what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves things like islamic monotheism good deeds and righteous actions for example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding islamic monotheism min qala la uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said min qala la ilaha illallah dakhal al-jannah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said whoever says la ilaha illallah will enter paradise this is just one of the hadiths that illustrates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves Islamic monotheism and there's so many ayats verses in the Quran wa ma umiru illa liya'budullah mukhlisin lahu din and they weren't commanded except to worship Allah alone and to him is the religion this is pure islamic monotheism this is one of the things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that we do good deeds as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says illa ladina amanu wa amilu salihat all throughout the Quran he says verily those who believe so there's the islamic monotheism in faith and believe in belief in iman wa amilu salihat and they do righteous deeds so Allah loves that we do good deeds righteous deeds righteous actions and also that we Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves uh, good actions and good conduct and behavior As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ma min shay'in athkalu fi mizan wa min yawm al-qiyamah." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer on the day of judgment than good manners." And this concept al-bara, meaning dis hating what Allah hates. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates disbelief. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates uh, all forms of evil. And Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala hates bid'a. He hates innovation in the religion why because he Subhanahu wa Ta'ala completed the religion. Al yawm akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa radayta lakum islam adina. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says this day I have perfected uh, my religion upon you. And I have made is and and made Islam uh you know the religion which I am pleased with. Islam is the religion that Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts. So Allah does not accept innovation in the religion. So Allah dislikes disbelief. He likes disbelief uh he dislikes disbelief kufr and he dislikes any and all forms of evil whether it be drinking alcohol, whether it be committing adultery, whether it be any of these uh stealing, all of these things and the 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 evidences are ample. It's all throughout the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Allah la yuhibbu man huwa kadhibun kafar. Man huwa kadhibu kafar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, about himself that in the Quran that verily Allah does not love the person who is a lying disbeliever the person who's lying and they deny the truth so we know Allah dislikes disbelief something else that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes as was stated in the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this also illustrates for us that Allah does not like innovation in the religion nor those groups and sects which innovate in the religion they try to change the religion of Islam and they have different beliefs which contradict what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with in an authentic hadith that was collected in muslim qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam la yuhibbuhum uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was describing the ansar these are companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who were in medina and we know that from the creed of the rafi the shia is they hate uh, the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and some of them worship ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu but the shahid is is that they speak evil against many of the companions and they decree them to be disbelievers so islam rejects these kind of deviant creeds and it is from islam and from commanding the good and forbidding the weak, evil and loving and hating for the sake of allah that you dislike those people who attack and hate islam so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said 
لا يحبهم إلا المؤمن ولا يبغضهم إلا المنافق. So the Prophet ﷺ said, and the one, the the only ones who who love them are the the one who loves him is a believer, and the one who hates them is a hypocrite. من أحبهم أحبه الله ومن أبغضهم أبغضه الله رواه مسلم. So and whoever loves them, Allah loves him. And whoever hates them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates him. Meaning hates the one who hates the Ansar. So meaning those people who dislike the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in accordance with the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has declared that they are people who of hypocrisy. And that there are people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes. So we know this is a part of al wala wal bara is refuting deviant ideologies which are not from Islam. And deviant people who have deviant ideologies which try to distort Islam. Regardless of whether it be uh, the extremists who try to hijack Islam in the name of extremism and terror. Or whether it be Shia that... Uh, speak evil about the companions, or whether it be groups and sects that distort the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of this is a part of protecting Islam, protecting the Islamic beliefs by disliking them and freeing ourselves from them. And we'll find ample evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah and the statements and actions of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu which illustrate this, which we're going to discuss. Another thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes, in the Allah like in Allah yubghidu al fahish al bari as was related in Tirmidhi I believe that where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in an authentic hadith that verily Allah dislikes evil speech so when a person has you know foul speech they lie they uh, curse people they speak ill about people Allah uh, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates this speech as was authenticated by the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So those are some of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes. This is what it entails uh al wala wal bara, loving and hating for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates innovation as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, that innovation is not from the religion. When you innovate meaning that you innovate and distort and change religious principles related to belief, related to worship, etc. As the Prophet ﷺ said, من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه فهو رد وفي رواية لمسلم من عمل عملا ليس عليه أمرنا فهو رد The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever innovates something in this matter of ours, meaning the religion, then it is rejected, meaning that innovation is rejected. The Prophet ﷺ also said, كل بذة ضلالة He said, every innovation leads uh, to misguidance or is misguidance. And every uh, misguidance is in the hellfire. This is the statement of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, And that's why it's very important to speak out against and refute deviant ideologies. It's not that a person hates Muslims, hates other Muslims. No. But you hate deviants. You hate those things which will change and attack uh, the image of Islam and attack Islam. And according to the scholars, and according to the nasus, the, the text, the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, we love people in accordance with their obedience to Allah. Meaning the person who is more righteous, we love him for the sake of Allah, more so. And the person who is less righteous, who has deviance, who has uh, sin, we dislike them in accordance with their sinfulness. And that doesn't mean ala itlaq, it doesn't mean that we totally dislike them. And, and it's a very important thing that must be uh, established here is that even the best person who disbelieves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worse than the worst sinner who is a Muslim. So that's a very important thing because a person who disbelieves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be in the hellfire forever. But an innovator a person who is deviant in the religion or a major sinner or what have you, they may spend some time in the fire, but they will come out because they are the people of Tawheed, as long as they are people of monotheism, Islamic monotheism. 
So this is an incredibly important characteristic as some people are confused about this and they believe that when they hear Ahl Sunnah criticizing other Muslims who have deviated, they, they feel doubt. They say, hey, you're criticizing other Muslims, but you're leaving uh, disbelievers. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made takfir of those people who disbelieve in Islam. You know, decre- declared them to be disbelievers and that they will be in the hellfire forever. And at the same time, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken all throughout the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa about trying to change Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion and, and telling lies about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is more, as the scholars have been asked, and just uh, yesterday in one of the lectures, uh, one of our sheikhs, Sheikh Muhammad Aqil, he was asked, you know, what is worse or what is more hated, the disbeliever or an innovator? And the sheikh responded, he said, no doubt that the one who disbelieves in Allah is a thousand times worse because they will be internally in the hellfire. But however, a person of innovation who distorts Islam and sours the picture of Islam could in some cases and some situations cause more harm to the Muslims. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah also referred to this in his book Minhaj al-Sunnah when he was referring to the Rafida, the Shia. He said they are akfar min Yahud wa Nasara. He said that they disbelieve more than the Jews and the Christians. Why? Because the Jews and the Christians, they don't generally attack uh, you know, some of the sacred signs in Islam, generally. They're generally more respectful. Whereas the, the Rafida, they make it a part of their creed to speak about the companions of the Prophet Wasallam and declare Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, one of the, the mother of the believers, that she was a, a, a person of... Uh, an untrustworthy person and that she was a person who committed adultery and things like this. This is what they claim uh, about her. So they are worse in that sense than than people who disbelieve even the pagans because the pagans respect the signs of Islam whereas those people make it a part of their creed to attack Islam and Muslims. Let's look at some of the examples. The Prophet ﷺ said about other Muslims like the Khawarij sect. Many hadith about this. But one particular hadith he said Al Khwarij hum kilab al nar. Okay, Makar Sallallahu Alaihi He said that the Khwarij, this sect that makes takfir of other Muslims, that decrees other Muslims to be apostate, that they are the dogs of the hellfire. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. So now we know from a hadith that yes, it's permissible when someone is deviant in the belief, when you're calling them back to the truth, you want good for them because you want them to leave their deviant and distortion of the Islamic principles to speak about them and warn the community of their danger. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, if he were living in the day when, the, when those khawarij would, would be around, he would fight them as like the, the killing of the people of Ad. This is uh, in another, near, in another uh, let's look to the Salaf, let's look to Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anha. He said, in, you will find this in Sahih Muslim, in the hadith of Jibreel, that some companions, they came to uh, Abdullah bin Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, and they mentioned about a group of people who had deviated in their belief, and they had distorted the principles of the Qadr, of the divine, uh, divine destiny which we believe, which is a pillar of Islam. So they distorted this principle. They denied the Qadr. What did Ibn Umar say about these people? Did he ask, oh, you know, they, did he, did he uh, uh, say, hey, I, I need to spend some time with them and just talk to them about it? No. But he gave us the correct principle, which is staying away and warning against people who are deviant in the religion of Islam that they need to be admonished and need to be corrected in order to come back to the truth. This is not uh, out of hatred. This is out of love, in fact. What did Ibn Umar say? He said, He said, إِذَا لَكِيْتَ أُولَئِكَ فَاخْبِرْهُمْ أَنِّي بَرِئُمْ مِنْهُمْ وَأَنَّهُمْ بُرَآءُ مِنِّي He said that if you meet these people, then tell them that I am free from them and they are free from me. So now we have, we have some hadith which show us that yes, it's permissible to speak about other Muslims when they've deviated. We have a athar of Ibn Umar 
And we can find tons of evidence. We can spin, there are whole books written about this subject. Another evidence for those people whose heart is not content with this is we can look at the statement of Ibn Sirin, radiallahu ta'ala, and, uh, rahim, rahimahullah ta'ala, who's one of the salaf, one of the, uh, the tabi'in. And he said, meaning the followers of the companions of the Prophet and he said when he saw one of his uh, son, his son leaving the house of a person who was a known innovator, this innovator was not a, a disbeliever, he was a Muslim, but he was innovating in creed. He had distorted the pristine Islamic creed. What did he say about this person? He said to his son, I would have rather that you had left from the house of a feminine, a feminine man, a wicked uh, you know, person who is doing all kind of other sins than leaving the house of an innovator. So this shows us, and there are ample evidences. Go to uh, the, the, the many books of, in Aqidah from the Salaf. Shara Sunnah Imam Babahari, Shara Sunnah uh, Baghawi, uh, Shara Sunnah Khalal, um, Kathra. There's so many books that illustrate these principles. So understand, Ayyu al Muslimin. Ayyu muslimun that this is from the religion to warn against sinfulness that you see. The Prophet ﷺ said, Men ra'a minkum munkaran fi ghayruhu biyad. That whenever you see, whoever sees uh, something wicked, then change it with his hand. And if he's unable to do so, then change it with his tongue, meaning speak out against it. And if he is unable to do so, then change it with his heart. And that's the weakest form of faith. Meaning that you hate that munkar, that sinfulness in your heart. So we ask Allah the Almighty to give us a clear understanding of the concept of al-wala wal-bara. And may Allah bless us with al nafi rizqan tayyib wa amna mutaqabbin. And anything I said correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan.